All right, welcome back. It's the YouTube Classroom video number 37. This is quarter two, week one, day three. This is the final day of our maps presentation. We're going to start off in 3D Studio Max today, and we are going to figure out exactly how to implement all of these things that we've created so far. So let's go ahead and open up my folder with all of the maps that we have and you can get these from the comment section or just below the comment section of the video there's a uh, google drive link that you can get and you will have access to all of these things so i've got mac matt bricks tile dm uh matt bricks tile em uh em blue em red nm om SM and SM2. So the reason I've got some multiple color variations, uh, you'll see here in a bit, a bit. Mostly it's so we can experiment and sort of find out exactly how some of these actually uh, will implement inside of our world. So first things first, we need to talk about all the different maps we've created and what we do to sort of delineate them. The thing with PNGs is we're going to have a whole lot of PNGs. We're going to have a whole lot of maps and materials that we're going to use in our in our scenes. This is uh, this means we need to delineate which one is which so that we can see them in the asset viewer. OK, so you'll notice that oftentimes here's our little cheat sheet here. Um, each one of these maps has its own name, has its own extension. So DM stands for diffuse maps, which is like the color map that we talk about, this one here. The normal map we've talked about before has NM at the end. Spec map, which is how glossy or how, um, how much the light, like uh, usually it's a gloss or specularity, and a lot of times you'll use it, the same map in two different inputs. Um, but basically what it does is show how much light is going to reflect off of that object. Opacity lets you to allows you to select things that you want to be able to see through. Um, emissive maps, self illumination. Uh, basically, what that does is sections that you want to glow or to give off light. For instance, if you're making a uh, a house that's going to be in the dark and you want the the windows to glow a little bit, you'll create a, a few, uh, emissive map. And then finally, AO or ambient occlusion maps. These are like shadows. Uh, that slightly darken your object when it should be darkened. Usually things like underneath the armpits, um, underneath the neck, anywhere where light generally doesn't shine as brightly. Uh, think of it as like faked shadows. Um, ambient occlusion maps are th things that we've been using in game development now for about 15 years, 20 years, and that are probably going to slowly go away as lighting gets better. Uh, as computers get faster, the c lighting can calculate better. Um, during the Xbox, original Xbox days, um, models often would not cast shadows on themselves. Um, but now we're getting to the point where that can be done without a huge hit on frame rate. So I would expect ambient occlusion maps to go away eventually. But for now, we're going to learn how to implement them. So a lot of these maps, and we're going to come back to that uh, thing in a minute. A lot of these maps are uh, black and white or grayscale maps. Okay. And you'll see I've got a bunch of different variations of them. And we're going to pull those in right now. First things first, let's take this cube and delete it. And let's create a sphere, mostly because I want to. Keyboard entry, uh, let's make it 25 centimeters. Uh, and hit Create. And then I'm going to hit W and move it up. Uh, let's go ahead and move it up by 50 centimeters. Cool. I'm also going to create a box. Uh, I'm going to keyboard entry that box as well. And I'm going to create the box. Um, let's make it length of 400, width of 400, and then height of 10. I'm basically creating a platform. I'm going to create that at 000. Create. Cool. And I'm going to change the color now to like a grayish. One of these custom colors is fine. We're not actually going to mess with that. I'm just doing it so that we have something that this can uh, sort of be over. Right. Um, so now let's hit M for our material editor and we get into I've got a bunch of stuff left over from when I was messing around with this earlier. Here we go. Material editor. So um, right click and we're going to go into materials uh, scan line. And today we're going to work in ray trace. Now we're going to actually experiment with a bunch of them. But for now, ray trace is what we're going to mess with. 
All right, I'm going to double click this ray trace and make sure I apply it. I think this is selected. My sphere is selected. Good. Sphere 01 is selected. Make sure you come up here to show shaded in viewport and assign material to selection. So now it's gray. I should move this so we can see it. Cool, cool, cool. Now we are going to start bringing in some of our materials. All right, let's go ahead and bring in the diffuse map. Just bring it and drag it in. I'll bring that in first. Get my whoops, get my folder back up. Uh, yep. Okay, cool. Um, let's go ahead and bring in, we'll just bring them all in. So next we'll do the tile emissive map will be our number two. I should probably just drag them in first and then worry about moving them. Uh, let's bring in the blue, the red, the normal map. Scroll down. The white tiles or the white bricks, the black bricks, and the gray bricks. Cool. And that's we, once we have all these in, that's enough to get started. Um, I'm going to arrange these so that they're kind of in order. If you pulled them in in the same order I did, we'll be able to ref refer to them in numbers, which is kind of fun. If you have a low bar for fun. Okay, cool. So this is our setup. So just the easiest thing to do and the basic thing we've done so far in this class is use diffuse maps, which is the bitmap we created already, which is the tiling bricks. We can just click on this little wire thing and drag it into the diffuse. And then suddenly we are good to go. You can see that our bricks are now on there and they smoothly tile all the way around. You can't see any seams at all because we made this properly. Cool. Oh, I can mute that. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, I'm actually also going to right click on here. I'm going to open a preview window so we can see this a little easier. I'm going to take this and I'm going to maximize it or make it bigger at least. And then it'll be smooth. All right, great. So now we can see it a little better. Now, I'm going to actually drag this off and so we see that it's gray. Let's go ahead and take this bitmap and drag it on this uh, map 5, which is our normal map, and drag it onto the bump. When we do that, you can see that we do get some bumps, although that's not really crisp or clear. The reason is we're using a bitmap that is a normal map in our bump map slot, which is where it should go, but normal maps actually need a separate map controller. So we go to maps, general, normal bump. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to grab, grab all these and move them down a little bit. Drag this to here and drag this to here. And you'll notice it's a much crisper, clearer map than it is, was before. It actually looks like the depth is better for the, the grout lines, stuff like that. Now, we can actually adjust the density and how, how bumpy this looks by clicking on the map, uh, the normal bump controller, and then changing this to like maybe two. See how much more like the light changes, the bumpiness changes. It looks like it comes out a lot more. You can go really stupid on this. It changes like 16 and then suddenly it looks weird. Um, I wouldn't do anything more than like 2. 1.5 is also pretty good. Um, and you'll notice the difference between that and when we add the diffuse map here. You can see on the spec highlight here how bright that actually is. So I'm going to actually take the diffuse map off again. So we just have the bump. And now we're going to adjust and look at the glossiness map. Glossiness and specular level are very similar. Um, glossiness is how wet something looks. And specular level is how much something will reflect. They're very, very, very similar. The difference is in glossiness, it's how wide the specular highlight is. And the specular highlight, I'm going to take off the bump for a second, is this white spot right here. So when you look at this uh, material on the sphere, it's got like a highlight here and a highlight here. By adjusting the specularity, you, we, can, we can adjust how, um, what parts of the material give off a highlight. So this, I'm going to grab this white brick one and drag it into spec level. And you can see that now the white makes the brick part a lot more shiny, but the grout part is a lot more matte. Okay, if I swap that, pull that out, and swap it so that the black spec level now the grout is white and the bricks are black and you can sort of see it if I do that. But come on. 
Oh, I dragged in the wrong one. That's why. There we go. So you can see the bricks are black. And when the bricks are black, the specular level of the bricks are matte and the grout is glossy. Now, some bricks, when you, you, know, you go to a city and you see walls that are covered and, and painted, they usually, uh, the bricks themselves are usually pretty like maybe a little bit glossy. And that's what we're, we're doing here. If you look at this material, I'm going to put this in on the diffuse so we can see it real quick. The bricks here are like a lighter gray and the grout is a darker gray, which means it's a subtle differentiation. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make that spec level uh, and you can do it in glossiness and you can do it in spec level. And then you sort of get a subtle change. Now, this is really powerful because all of these tiny little changes make a huge difference. So I'm going to add my diffuse map back on, take my grayish map and put it in spec level. And you can see it's subtle now. And now I'm going to take the same one and put it in glossiness. All right. Now I've got like a sort of a, uh, a pale look to it. If I grab this normal map and put in the bump, there you go. You can really start to see that it's got a, like a real texture to it. And it's starting to look a lot, lot better. You can actually adjust things like um, if you want it to be more glossy, you can adjust it and make the white, uh, set the white bricks in there versus the black bricks. Come on. There we go. Cool. So now the black bricks, which are very glossy, are adjusted here. And the white bricks, if you put it in there, there you go. And it's just a much tighter specular highlight. Okay? Now, the next thing we want to talk about, and the last one, sort of, well, one of the last ones we want to talk about, is translucency. Okay, translucency is down here. And what translucency is, I'm going to break all these off so we can sort of get rid of them. You can see the change happen. Take that off. All right, cool. Translucency is usually a white or black map, you know, a black and white map, because usually it's see-through or not, all right? If you put it into translucency, you can see through sections of it. I'm going to actually uh, click here, right click, and then show background. So we should be able to see through, oh, I, I'm sorry, transparency, my bad, not translucency. So with black, here, now this is kind of annoying um, because it's not the same. Every material is slightly different. So sometimes uh, a white brick is see-through. In this case, where the white bricks are see-through, and the black bricks are not. So if I swap it, it should swap. Come on. There we go. See the difference? So in this case, the grout is visible and the bricks are not. In this case, swap it. The bricks are visible and the grout is not. Now, for the ray trace material, that's how it works. For other materials, that's not exactly how it works all the time. Um, you, if you want things to be slightly see-through, you can uh, do grays, shades of gray. Mm -hmm. So transparency is very similar to how the specularity works. Think of the grayscale maps as in each pixel has a value between one, or yeah, one which is pure white and zero, which is pure black. And then anything gray in between is like a, a, a linear scale in that position. So if you want something to be sort of see-through, you make it like a gray, and then you can sort of see through it. Now, the next cool thing, we pull this one off, and all these maps can be adjusted and added. So if I've got a bitmap here, this uh, let's go ahead and take this red, uh, red grout version and put it in fluorescence. Now it will glow, and we can actually adjust how much um, this is glowing inside the ray trace material under maps fluorescence crank it uh, we can pull it down so it doesn't glow at all or we can pull it uh, like 70 so it's less glowy and we can adjust these maps together so currently what fluorescence does is it makes even when there's a shadow on the object it will give off this particular color so if i have diffuse on Right? You can see that now the, grit, the grout is slightly glowing red. Right? And if I adjust the fluorescent to like 20, 
it's very, very, very subtle. And you can only really see it in the dark. Like in this shaded area here, you can sort of see it growing, glowing. Now, once again, we can add all of these together at the same time. So that they all sort of complement one another. Spec level, we'll do a glossiness like that. So you get that brick. And we can even do a um, transparency. So now you can sort of see through the grout because I use black, um, a black brick and white grout. Now this is all well and good until we start creating another material. So if we do a material uh, scan line, standard, a lot of the same things apply, right? So let's 26, we can do diffuse color. And let me open this up, preview window. And expand it out. So this is our other one. I want to move this over to the side so we can still see it, but we can mess with this stuff. Maybe. There we go. All right, cool. So I hope you can still see it. So um, we can do the exact same thing. So this bitmap is going into transparency. Um, and this, we call that opacity. But see, it's inverted. So the standard material versus the ray, tra ray trace material is inverted. So that's kind of the annoying part. The, it's not the same. So opacity in this is inverted from what the value is in here. So a lot of the times you'll just have to sort of figure out whether black is see-through or white is see-through. Generally, white means you can't see through it and black means you can, but it's not always the case. So a lot of times you will end up experimenting. What I want you to do today is I'm going to take this normal bump and I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to take this uh, opacity and put a specular level. And this goes into glossiness. Right? And then what do we do for the bumps already in there? The bitmap. What is this? You have reflection, all sorts of stuff. But you'll notice that all of these are basically the same systems. They'll come out differently, of course, but, oh, what I need, I'll take the glossiness off so we can sort of see it better. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Opacity is what I was taking off. Transparency. For this one, it's called transparency. All right, cool. And then I need the red, the glow. That usually is called emissive. Um, this one doesn't have it. Yeah. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, so there's also our general material, which is physical material. And it has the same sort of setup. I'm going to take these and drag them out of the way. Notice, you know, I don't have to bring in a whole bunch of new materials. I can just keep wiring up to different sections. So base color map is this section and I can pre-open the preview here for that as well. There we go. Once again, this is a physical material. Our normal bump map goes into bump where there it is. Our emissive goes into emission map, color map. And the amount of emissive activity can be done through here. So there we go. So this is the emission map versus emissive col uh, color. So the map tells it how much brightness. The color tells it what color to do. So that's what this physical material does. Um, we got the bump in there already, I think. Yes. Um, we can do the specularity. Uh, I think it's called roughness in here. Yep. There we go. We've got our highlight. Um, and we can do our diffuse roughness and it should highlight slightly different and there you go so once again we can double click on this object and then see how it works in the engine but ultimately this is how the map system works so we've got a bunch of different maps here but at the end of the day all of them work basically the same way you just need to understand the terms okay diffuse is always color Bump usually refers to normal maps, but before there were there were grayscale maps called bump maps, but now we use normal maps, and they work better because they're three different directions we talked about in the other video. Um, 
your grayscale maps, it's a great idea whenever you're creating something that you know you're going to need uh, like a bump map on to create multiple levels of it. Like the spec, usually the specularity map is something that's grays. Um, the black and white is usually for opacity and it's easy to invert it to make two of them. It's also easy to just convert it usually in the engine, uh, in the game engine. Um, the emissive map is almost always a color on top of black. Whatever is black will not glow, whatever is colored will glow. Sometimes you need an emissive map with color and an emissive map without it. So like one thing that we were doing earlier, like this one, we can take this map here and change the emissive map. I want to take that and apply it to our object. Now in the engine, or in here, you're probably not going to see it too well, but if I render it, render, there you go. Looks pretty cool. You get like subtle, like where it's glowing isn't quite exactly in the right spots. Like it's not full grout glow because this particular map isn't quite the full grout. It glows a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit of it. Uh, you can see it's not as large as the other maps. See, that's fatter grout than that. Anyway, what I want you to do today is go ahead and experiment with this a little bit and see what happens. Uh, don't worry about breaking it because you're not going to break it. You've got all these maps to play with. Um, you can actually have the emissive map, uh, when you render, it can render an output onto this plane, which is why I made it to begin with. Also, just as a review, remember diffuse maps are DM. So if you ever turn in a diffuse map, it needs to be whatever the file name is. I usually start every material with mat, underscore, whatever the mat material is, underscore, then DM for diffuse, NM for normal, SM for specularity. And usually, specularity and gloss is always white is really shiny, black is not. Opacity maps. In 3D Studio, um, it changes, but in Unreal, Black is invisible and white is visible, which makes sense because black is zero and white is one. So if th something is fully visible, that gets a one. But in 3D Studio, it's weird. So whatever, whatever. Um, self uh, EM is self illumination. So something that glowing, anything that puts off light, and AO is ambient occlusion. Once again, this is usually a a grayscale map. Okay. Uh, once again, the black. Uh, almost all of them are black and white. Uh, emissive, black is not lit, white is lit, uh, and you can always look at this because it's lit. Yeah, I went there. Uh, and then that's it. So you're going to experiment with this. Uh, this is a side by side with just a diffuse map and with a diffuse and normal, so you can sort of see what the difference. Um, so you're going to start, uh, go ahead and work with this ball. You're not actually going to turn any of this in this week. Um, but I do want to make sure that you're comfortable with it so that we can hit the ground running next time. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, I will see you next time.